Happy Halloween, everyone, and thank you for taking this 31-day journey with me. It's always bittersweet when I watch my final movie, but I hoped you enjoyed some of my reviews and maybe gave you some ideas for your next movie night. On Halloween, I like picking a movie that's going to scare me because it's what the holiday's made for. Today, on the spookiest day on the calendar, I went to a series that always brings the scares. I'm talking about The Conjuring. The Devil Made Me Do It. Damn, the opening to this movie is incredibly effective. We start off with the Warrens attempting an exorcism on a young child. A priest shows up and I smile because they recreate the iconic shot from the exorcist when he gets out of his car. Once he gets inside, whew, things get crazy. The poor boy is being stalked by this demon in his own home and it's terrifying. The way the child contorts his body combined with the screams and the sound his body makes are just terrifying. The exorcism goes forward, but it doesn't go smoothly. Arnie, the sister's boyfriend, then convinces the demon to leave the boy and to go in him instead. From there, the series takes a really drastic turn from its formula, and I have to say, I really liked it. The first two movies were pretty much confined to one location and just dealt with a haunted house. I love the formula, but I appreciate how this movie tries something else and it turns into a mystery. I really liked following the Lauren's investigation. I mean, it was a big departure from the norm, and movies should be given credit for taking risks. And I think in this case, it worked out pretty well. And then imagine my surprise when the steward of Gondor, Denethor himself, shows up. I really like the Conjuring series, mainly because I love Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga as Ed and Lorraine. You can actually feel the chemistry and love these characters have for one another. When one of them is in danger, you share their fear and their pain. While watching the other movies in this universe, I enjoy them, but in the back of my mind, I'm just wishing Ed and Lorraine were in it. They're the glue that holds this series together. The characters are great, and I really can't see any two actors being better in the role than these two. They may be my favorite movie couple. Now comes the big question. Is it scary? Well, I'm happy to report it runs the gamut between scary and holy shit. This month has been light on the scares, so let me tell you how much of a relief it was to feel my body tense up in moments, followed by the inevitable staring at my screen in horror at what I was watching. It's not as scary as the first one, and there isn't a baddie as memorable as the crooked man from the second, but it makes up for it with some memorable characters who aren't the Warrens and some damn chilling moments. I can't say enough about how terrifying the movements are for the baddies in this movie. Anytime they're on screen and they're moving around, it's so otherworldly and freaky in the best way imaginable. On a personal note, I like how these movies don't take the current trend and turn religious people into cartoon characters. I know the Catholic Church and religion in general can be off-putting for some people, but I appreciate this movie doesn't take the low-hanging fruit. A review from the New York Times saying the movie would be even better if it privileged ghoulishness over gospel. What? Their religion is very central to the characters, and they're fighting demons. The whole god thing, it's kind of hard to get around in these series of movies. With that said, it's not all great. There's an actual demon in the movie, but the big bad, it's an older lady. She's the one who sets everything into motion, and she's the main antagonist. I didn't like that. I personally am not a fan of putting a human face on your unknowable evil. I believe it lessens the impact. With that said, I love how the baddie ends up getting her comeuppance because it's pretty awesome. I understand her conclusion helps open up the world these people live in, but I couldn't help but feel a little underwhelmed. Still, despite my dislike for her inclusion, she does make me excited for where the series can go from here. The movie ends with Ed putting another trinket in their haunted museum, and you can see some of their greatest hits, like a Valak painting in the background and our dear friend Annabelle. Could you imagine keeping trophies or actual entities like this that you defeated in your own house? I mean, assuming you had the bravery to venture down there, how many of us could make it through there without taunting Annabelle? Personally, I don't think I'd be able to resist. Eight and a half, Dr. Chainsaws.